Pumpkin Deck Masters Week 1, Day 2. We've just done Casting Forsen versus Bunny Muffins, which was actually a very quick series. We're going to be moving on to Surrender versus Cypher. Surrender, a South Korean player. We saw him play yesterday, and he beat Sho fairly convincingly. Mm -hmm. He was actually one of the i think one of the better players of the series he played everything perfectly um he had some pretty incredible plays that he thought of quickly especially with his rogue deck but today we see that he actually decided not to bring the same rogue i guess that's because he might have expected that his opponent today cypher may have been scouting him so players are allowed to switch their deck sets between uh, matches yeah, I mean, it makes sense to scout your opponents, especially when you don't really have much information. Surrender um, participated in a tournament back in 2014 and not really since, so we have no, like, very little information. And as a result, Cypher would have at least watched the VOD from yesterday to see what he played. So Surrender's lineup is Hunter, Druid, Warrior. His Warrior got banned, as is very often the case when that class is picked. And Cypher has Mage, Warlock, and Rogue. His Rogue got banned. So apparently Surrender respecting Rogue and also playing it very well. So, taking a look, Surrender obviously has a more kind of standard lineup with Hunter and Druid left. We can kind of expect what we have, some type of either hybrid Hunter, and then with this Druid, either has a combo fast Druid or a Taunt. However, with Cypher, he has one kind of the element of surprise over Surrender with Mage and Warlock. What kind of uh, versions of those decks do you expect to see? Expect... I don't really know. I mean, that like those are the two classes for which archetypes are really just thrown in the air for me. Warlock has so many archetypes at the moment. It's just blowing my mind. And on the other hand, Mage also has a lot. They've got Freeze Mage. They've got Echo Mage. They've got Aggro Mage. You can play Tempo Mage in a mul like multiple ways. Um, so as far as archetypes, I'd love to see Echo, but I'm willing to take Freeze as well. Now, do you think that because he bans Surrender's Warrior, he might be leaning more towards a Freeze Mage? That, that would personally so. be my guess, but... Makes a lot of sense because if it happens to be like any warrior that plays their cards properly and you're playing freeze mage against, you're not going to want to run into. Um, f you know, mage is by default, especially if you're playing freeze rather, uh, countered by control warrior, any warrior really that just armors up and passes. And we are going straight into game one with what looks like a either hybrid or face hunter from Surrender while Cypher is in fact playing freeze mage. Well, if this is a face hunter, the early game was a big whiff uh, for Surrender there. Not exactly what he's looking for. Mm -hmm. How often do you Iron Bikel, that mad scientist, if you're expecting? Then again, there's no indication that it is Freeze, right? Still exactly. none. Uh, against Freeze, I might consider it, though. Yeah, I, th I feel like versus any other deck, you would use the Iron Beak Owl against a Mad Scientist. But Freeze, you, a lot of the times, if you are running cards like Shredder and High Main, you want to save those owls for the Doomsayer. You cannot let a full board wipe happen right. as an aggro hunter or a mid range type hunter. What to do? What now, so, do you think that's a great. Cypher is going to get his two first secrets out pretty early. Now, I, we mentioned this yesterday while playing. It's right. what do you think about his choice to use the ice block over um, his ice barrier there? I think because he was going to get both traps, he would rather have access to his second ice barrier, and therefore that's the reason he played his ice block. What do you think? Against, uh, like, by by uh, looking at all the matches that I, that, I could, that I could from Freeze Mage versus Hunter in general, very often the matchup is won by the Freeze Mage very convincingly if the freeze mage can get double ice bear it's almost a hundred percent win rate when those two are fine are, are found it's like upwards of 85 percent and that's a pretty tough matchup like blind going into it you wouldn't expect that high of a win rate but when you pull off both ice bearers during the match it's much much higher exactly so throwing down the wolf rider here he's just trying to push damage especially with the leopard on top of it he even though cypher has used his first ice barrier uh, Surrender is just throwing damage after damage after damage, kind of what a hunter just is made to do. The question is, how will he answer it? Do you expect to see a Doomsayer come down this turn in order to kind of contest the board? There's two options, really. Ice Barrier ping into a Blizzard next turn, or you've got the Doomsayer play as a preemptive uh, preventive measure. But I, I don't think you can play Doomsayer now, right? Because of the amount of damage on the board. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you are likely to lose the Doomsayer and not do much. So I think Ice Barrier Ping might be the most reasonable, and then you transition into Blizzard next turn, and that's going to be the best way for you to maybe get to that late game or those, you know, more AoEs. Because for the time being, there's no card draw, really, for the Mage. Oh, and man. And the fact that we see that, oh, Surrender has Dr. Boom 
and double uh, kill command in hand. That is going to be huge in this matchup. Um, just based on the amount of damage that Surrender has, even though Cypher had probably one of the best starts you could ask for as a freeze mage, I may have to give the odds to Surrender right now. Yeah, I have to give you that. The double ice barrier may be the best way to win, but it doesn't guarantee it. And based on what there's, I mean, that, that hand from Surrender is just absolutely insane. Blizzard here stalls, but there's still the coin in Surrender's hand into Dr. Boom right away. And still, unless Cypher top decks Frost Nova, he can play Doomsday with it. He doesn't see a way out of this. And even if he does do that, Surrender has the RNB Cal as a backup plan. Exactly. I have to say, I am a little surprised he wanted to use the Blizzard right now when he did have the option to use Loot Hoarder and just ping off the 4-1. Uh, it only stops 5 incoming damage by uh, using the Blizzard currently, but then it stops, It also stops him from having that Blizzard Doomsayer in the following few turns. Picks up Emperor Thorsten, doesn't get drier than this, can't even weave in a hero power at this point. I think he's going to have to go for the ping Leoc uh, Loot Hoarder. Like this, there's no way he doesn't. Mm -hmm. Doomsayer right, do could act, time. actually, as a soak 7 damage healing touch kind of ability here. And I think that is what he's going to go for, but by having the Iron Beak Owl, Cypher is about to get incredibly punished by this move. You, you can never know with what you, like, you can't know, obviously, what your opponent has. So it is a risk to take, and unfortunately, the consequences here are going to be dire. But then again, Cypher's follow-up deck is a... Um... I mean, Cypher's follow-up deck, he won't have to use right away if he doesn't want to. Surrender's gonna have to play Druid against Freeze Mage. So, I guess, quick note on that. Who do you think right now, especially with the uh, new version of Freeze Mages, with the Emperor Thorisan, has advantage in the Druid versus Freeze Mage matchup? Well, I think it depends on when you draw the Emperor, but very often... It almost feels like whoever gets it first um, will take the, the lead very frequently in a matchup like that one. <laughs> so Surrender here hesitating between Iron B. Cowl and trade with Dr. Boom. I think missing out on 7 damage against Freeze Mage is just not an option, but correct me if I'm wrong. Absolutely, but at the same time, he has to be worried that Cypher may have put that out as a bait, because if he follows it up with a um, Frost Nova and another Doomsayer, then Surrender would be in a bit of trouble. He might not have the damage to actually push through. But it looks like he's going to take the aggressive route here and hope that the boom bots plus the kill command in hand that even if that did happen would be enough to actually uh, finish him off. Well, Cypher with limited options going to have to probably frostbolt Dr. Boom and hope that things line up. Maybe even Loot Hoarder ping the, the owl to prevent a second command. But if he goes for the Emperor, that's the long-term play. But it might lead to a nice block that gets popped. <laughs> Question well, he is, got a free really? minions. Does he have enough damage to actually uh, pop the block right now? He's got four on board, two in hand, six, plus the kill command, five. So he will actually be popping the block this turn. On and one damage, yeah, and the Lepronome is a crazy card in those situations. Mm -hmm. I would say even the boom bots are even worse, because now he can't even uh, use another blizzard, because if, again, the Lepronome could do the damage, or the boom bots at the same time. Yeah, sometimes Dr. Boom can be used as a Lepronome in, uh, in this matchup. Or like it acts as a pseudo explosive trap at times as well. Like just by forcing the mage to remove minions that will kill him, and the ice block not triggering on your own turn anymore, that's an issue. Now Cypher knows it. Mm -hmm. He's got about. I think at this point he's about arcane intellect for an out. And even then, he's gonna yeah, have to Alex then. and hope. He, I would say that the ice lance would be his best current draw right now in order to ice lance Doctor Boom along with Alex Straza. Arcane well, Intellect you, may give you, you him another live. opportunity. Well, you Alex and trade with your Emperor into the 7-4, you're going to live. But to say that you're going to win is a big uh, is a big stretch here. Exactly. I, I would have strongly considered just going for the Ice Block here, giving yourself an, two draws with the Arcane Intellect, and another opportunity to get into that um, Ice Lance play to finish off the Dr. Boom later. Oh man, Cypher is going to have to run into a freezing trap here. That is not at all what he wants to see. He doesn't know it yet, but that is not good. And now if Blizzard were used on this board, <laughs> what are the odds of Cypher dying? Let's see, so he's taking two damage. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's Boombot, so I would say 100%. Right, makes sense. He's contemplating whether or not to play the knife juggler. I would actually have to agree that holding it, or uh, I think 
that holding it may be better. Just in case he does get an Unleash the Hounds in the following turns, it could give him enough extra damage to pop the block. What do you think? Just one or two. I mean, at this point, I think whatever happens, it's going to come down to whether or not the mage can freeze your board, and whether or not the juggler's on it is going to have very little impact. And still, doesn't find any card draw. He has to ping his own blood mage to find a frost nova. Otherwise, this is just going to end then and there. Mm -hmm. the oh no, he does uh, play the uh, Acolyte of Pain. He goes for the Acolyte of Pain. Sees that it is not, not explosive. Enough. He was expecting explosive trap. This is what this indicates to me, and it is not explosive trap, which as a result, he will simply concede out of the game, and Surrender will take it 1-0 over Cypher at the moment. I mean, he's doing amazing. Surrender yesterday beating Sho, and now um, going 1 over Cypher. He's got another deck on the back end. He's got a Druid. Cypher can stick to his mage or go for Warlock, and I would say Cypher could potentially still salvage the series 2-1. He could reverse sweep uh, Surrender here. Absolutely. I really don't think that Cypher is out of this tournament or out of this match. I, I, I personally don't find Druid to be that safe of a choice in the current meta. It can be beat by so many of the popular decks, including Freeze Mage. I actually think I would have to give the edge to Freeze Mage overall right now. Yeah. Um, unless the uh, Druid happens to get Wild Growth into an early combo. And at the same time, if the Warlock is playing Zoo, Zoo has major advantage. Um, Malagos and Handlock, I would actually have to give a slight advantage to Druid, but it's by no means unwinnable for the Warlock, so I would not count Cypher out just yet. Alright, well into the game, Druid versus the Freeze Mage, Cypher not changing his deck here, he's gonna stick to it, he finds Double Acolyte, I wouldn't be surprised to see him keep uh, both of them, I mean I don't see why I'd throw those back. <laughs> and he does keep them, and there is a Wild Growth and an Innervate. From Ooh, Wild Growth, Innervate, and Shredder. That is really exactly what Swender really wants to see. Into Dr. Boom. This is unreal. So turn that two Wild turn Growth. Wow. Turn Shredder. Turn four Dr. Boom. <laughs> That's what you need to do it. Oh man, Dr. Five is about to drop some bombs here. Drop some freedom on Cypher. That's unfortunate, I have to say. But this is going to be <laughs> short, short. Well, you never know, right? It, all it takes is one Doomsayer play with a Frost Nova. It doesn't and take much more than this. All he needs right now is a Frost Nova. The question is whether or not he wants to ping his Acolyte, throw another Acolyte down, or even just play the Arcane Intellect here. I might now, consider just dropping the other Acolyte. Now, that he way, doesn't but Doomsayer may be his best play. He doesn't know it. I don't think it is ever in this position. If you're a Cypher, it is never the best play. If you're like knowing the hands, of course it is, but um, do, do, would you ever really consider it? Like the odds that the opponent has. And he picks up an Ice Lance, however. That could be an important card for him. That will slow the uh, pace of this Dr. Boom down, but it's still going to do a lot of damage that he won't be no! able to No! Elothev is picked up by Surrender on the back end. I've got to say, this isn't fair. Cypher just looking demolished, and quite frankly, I mean, he is. Uh, <laughs> this is this is a bit excruciating. I guess you have to go for the Acolyte Ice Lance and hope yeah, that you exactly. get Nova. He's just thinking to himself, how did this happen? Esports! That's how. That's very true. Um, now, actually, I do see a move that... Let's see. Uh, no, I was going to say Double Doomsayer, but that doesn't even do it. He may have to play the Loot Hoarder and take this damage. Oh, Basically actually, soak damage with the... I mean, what he doesn't know is that Lothab's coming out. Unless exactly. the unless Surrender thinks Shade of Nax is better. I, I guess it's better. You could seal the game later with Lothab. Like, you don't have to rush into it. I just... Uh... I, mean, I, don't know. I, I think with Dr. Off. Boom down, if you play Lothab, it's just game over. He has to be scared with that empty Doomsayer coming down. That Cypher probably has the other one, and possibly the Frost Nova. So if you play Lothab, it will set you up to not have lethal the next turn, but really just take this game away to a point that Cypher just will not be coming back from it. The amount of damage that's going to be coming in forcefully. I mean, he's going to have to play Ice Lance for five at this point. Can he even at six? No, he doesn't six have enough mana. mana. It's impossible. Yep. Well, he's going to have to hope that he finds what he needs. Um, I, again, I maybe forcing be, minions away from Doomsayer. Exactly. It's going to be Acolyte and Mad Scientist, most likely. He needs to save that Doomsayer in the hopes of getting Frost Nova if he ever wants to win. But I just don't see a way at this point. Let's not, uh, let's not 
you know, stream defeat yet. I have seen freeze mages get a lot of um, a lot of freezes back to back, right? Mm -hmm. Just getting it done. You get Blizzard, then you follow it up. Druid never finds the combo, and suddenly things can look a bit better. And the act wow, four to the face with that boom bot. So he, he took the chance of trying to get his scientist killed there. <laughs> well, that's game. That, that but it is looks like right that then. is game over. Yeah. It, well, never mind. That we four can to the face took him out. And Cypher just leaning back into feed. He knew that there was nothing you can do when you get a turn five Doctor Boom, followed by a turn six low Zeb. That this was just is, uh, a blowout. Like I, I don't want to sound sound biased, but that was just surrender all the way. He took that match from the beginning, and it's not like I gotta say, it's not like he showed all that much skill as a player of what he normally does. That was just <laughs> the cards played themselves. Well, truth be said, yes, the cards did play themselves, but that's the mat that, that's what Druid does. I think Druid is an almost autopilot deck most of the time, whereby when you do find Wild Growth and Innervate, they kind of play themselves, right? You get the cards on curve, and very often you know what to do uh, with those cards. It becomes tougher when you don't curve well. Um, I think that's when Druid, you know, the skill in a Druid player really shines, but then um, their surrender just curved perfectly. Like Wild Growth, exactly. Shredder into Dr. Boom with Innervate, top decks the Lothip to seal the board out and has a swipe on the back end and the Boom Bot just hitting for RNG damage. I mean, there was no way for Cypher to get this one unless he'd gotten an early Frost Nova, which unfortunately for him, he didn't. Absolutely. So again, congratulations to Surrender for taking his second match in the Vulcan Deckmasters tournament. He won his match against, I think we said Show yesterday. Uh, yeah, he did win against Show yesterday, and now he's winning versus Cypher, so he's got another match, I think, planned at the beginning of uh, next week, unless I'm mistaken, mm -hmm. I might be wrong about this. Uh, he's got a match versus Tides, if I'm not mistaken. The so next... Go ahead. Oh, so Surrender does take an early lead in this tournament, which will really help him going to the future matches. Just have that uh, weight off your shoulders, that way he can drop a game or two and still remain in line for the playoffs of this tournament. Yeah, he is uh, number one in Group B by far at the moment. Like he's won over Cipher and Show, so we'll see exactly what happens with the the group again. You know, the the top players in each group will move on to the playoffs, where they'll be getting into the I guess the most important games, if you will. Mm -hmm. We have another match today: Trump versus Hawkeye. Now I don't know about you, but Hawkeye is a player that I very very much love. Uh, he plays Shaman. Recently, Shaman has been getting very little love from a lot of pro players. Um, considered one of the most unreliable classes, I would say. It's, you know, it's still playing the same old way it always did. Uh, mm -hmm. And Hawkeye has been playing it and doing very well with it, in fact, recently. Trump played yesterday versus Harudra and lost. Uh, Harudra, a name that I hadn't heard of, but he, again, played Druid. Got a really sick start. So we'll see Trump versus Hawkeye. That's going to be pretty crazy. I'm going to be very excited for this match. We will be taking a short break just to get everything set up, so stay tuned. Um, quick shout out to our two major sponsors before we go. First, obviously, is Vulcan for putting on this tournament. Vulcan is the largest fantasy esports site, and they recently announced a $10 million prize pool for this year. You can play fantasy games for League of Legends, CSGO, Dota 2, and now even Hearthstone on their site. Um, so what you want to do is you want to use the promo code DECKMASTERS for a deposit bonus of up to $1,000. Go to Vulcan.com, or I'm sorry, DECKMASTERS.Vulcan.com for that code. Yeah, you're going to be able to you know, get into the whole esports betting thing uh, with a bit of a head start if you're aiming to deposit money in there. That being said, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after the break. 